My name is Martin Bosma. I'm a data scientist slash machine learning engineer at uh, Whisper. Um, and I'm going to talk about retrieving images from short text. That's, maybe that sounds a little bit academic, but um, it's actually a very important problem for us. So I'm going to first um, talk about what we do exactly, and then um, talk a little bit about the problem, and um, then talk about how we, appro how we involve our approach over time um, to tackle this problem. So um, Whisper is a social network with over 30 million um, monthly active users. Um, every post on our platform is text on top of an image. And uh, what is unique about our platform is that um, posts are not associated with your identity. There's no profile. You just post something, and then everyone can read it. Um, and the hope is that people share things that way that uh, they wouldn't otherwise share on traditional social networks. And then once you post something, other people can interact with it using by um, what we call a heart, which is basically like a like, and then um, by chatting, and um, by replying to it uh, with a post that's in the same format. So I've got some examples here of posts that were popular yesterday. I will give you a minute to read it. So um, people can create these posts by um, first entering the text, and then we will actually suggest an image to them. And if they don't like that suggestion, they can um, uh, see more suggestions. And if they don't like those either, then they can search for other images by entering a search term, or they can upload their own images. So. Um, Image suggestions are a pretty crucial part of our um, creation process for our posts. And uh, the first version of Whisper doesn't, didn't have this. So they, um, once we introduced this, we drastically reduced the friction in our creation process. And um, partly because of this, more than 50% of our users actually create content, which is pretty unique for a social network or um, any site that has user-generated content. So, and we're trying to get images that are relevant to the post, that are high quality, and that su support the emotional state of the post. That's actually the most important function. We're not, so we're not trying to literally show what you're saying, but we're trying to give it another dimension by um, adding an image. So <coughs> when we first implemented this, um, we already had image searches. So we basically expanded on top of that by um, generating a search term based on the text, and then um, we would do an, a search for that term. And I'm going to talk about exactly how we generated those uh, search terms in a minute. But um, then, of course, we had caching, so to make the process a little bit faster. But we would always have to go to like third-party API to um, get the images. And the reason that we um, chose this approach is, um, well, what else would we do, right? We could either directly search for the text, but that doesn't really give you good results, especially if it's a longer sentence or two sentences. If you, even in an image search engine like Bing or Google, if you put in um, a long sentences, you usually don't get any results at all. Or if you do, they're usually not very good. We actually want to highlight one specific term in the text as opposed to, um, finding something that has every keyword in, that is in that text. Like if you think back to the previous example with the dancer, the image showed the dancer doesn't, didn't show a, boy, uh, a brother or parents or whatever. 
And then another way would be to use convolutional neural networks. And there's been a lot of research on this uh, last year, especially the other way around, from going from um, text to, um, uh, sorry, from going from images to a sentence that describes it. But we don't feel like those are accurate enough. And even if there were, we, there's not really a data set that has all of the image classes that we're interested in, because we're mostly interested in emotional things. Our most um, used search term is actually love. So, and ImageNet has like uh, a thousand dog, uh, kinds of dog breeds or something like that, which is not really what we're interested in. And then our own data set would be too noisy probably. And also you would have to do face detection to detect emotions, so this approach is out. Um, so back to the pipeline. So what I left open is how we actually generate um, those search terms. And we tried many different approaches, including just um, hard coding a list of terms that tend to generate high quality images. And then going a little bit further is doing sentiment analysis on um, the text. So if the text has negative sentiment, we would gi give a term like rainy day or a storm cloud. And if it has positive sentiment, then we would do sunny and beaches and people smiling. And Going another step further is actually extracting a keyword using TF-IDF and scoring. Um, so this work, those approaches all um, work okay, but we found what works the best is actually making use of all the image searches that we already have, which is a giant data set. Um, and uh, learning from that what people search for given a text. So, and then what we use that we, when I say it works better, then um, we used uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk to ask people, hey, uh, which image fits the most? And we also did A-B tests where we would use different strategies to see um, w where people create more whispers when they abort the create process and um, when they would do more searches or they would accept the suggestions. So our first approach for learning um, from that data set was using um, nearest neighbors. So we'd just retrieve um, the 20 most similar terms and uh, or 20 most similar whispers to the whisper that someone was trying to create and then get the terms that, associate, that are associated with that uh, whisper, the image searches. So we only use whispers that were created using image searches and then score them somehow. So the main advantage of this approach is that it's um, better than what we had before, which was nothing. So, but the main disadvantage is, of course, all the reasons that people use, um, uh, don't use nearest neighbors. So mainly that you, the time that it takes to actually generate a suggestion is, um, dependent on the size of your training set. So then we moved to actually using um, similar terms, so retrieving similar terms instead of similar um, whispers. So we would compute the cosine similarity. Each term would be represented as a bag of words, so as one giant document, and then we would compute the cosine similarity between the term and the newly created whisper and would add a prior, because otherwise you would always get some very rare terms that match to the new thing that you're trying to cre create, because it just happens to have the same words. And so the main, this, the main advantage over the previous approach is that it's more scalable. And as a side effect, we also have a fixed size vocabulary now. So we can actually um, pre-compute or we can create a collection of, um, of images for, for every term. So we had about 36,000 um, terms. And the accuracy of this approach was 2%, which is actually um, a lot if you think about it, because out of 36,000 terms, uh, in 2% of the case, we would guess correctly what that person searched for. And there's many possible searches that would be correct, uh, quote unquote, for a 
Tear von Whisper. So now um, we would have a fixed list of terms and we would have our own repository of images and we would generate that repository offline. And we also um, remove some low quality images by doing um, text detection. So we don't want images with text on text and by um, removing images with white backgrounds and removing res ro low resolution images. So this worked um, relatively well. And um, to be honest, we're actually still using this in production right now, but we've already um, developed the next version where we looked at um, viewing this as a classification problem as opposed to an information retrieval problem. So um, we basically, here we take the back of words as an input and then um, create a 36,000 dimensional vector and then use the softmax so we can view it as a probability distribution, so it sums up to one. And um, we'll use stochastic gradient descent to learn. So the main advantage of this is that it optimizes a metric that's very related to accuracy. So here we used uh, cross entropy. Well, the main disadvantage is that it's actually not feasible to learn this. It's, um, so W alone, which would be 36,000 by uh, 1,000, which 100,000, which is the size of our vocabulary, is, um, would be 16 gigabytes. So while that might fit in memory, um, it would take ages to learn. So maybe you could do something with like sparse representations, but um, what we did instead is use a neural network model with um, where we go to a thousand dimensional hidden state and then we use rectified linear units as activations and um, AdaGrad to train it. And we trained this for three days on the GPU. And again, this directly optimizes um, the metric related to accuracy and it's now feasible. And this actually gave us 13% accuracy, which um, we were actually very amazed by that this is possible. But it's um, partly because of the long tail in what people search for. So um, the top 100 terms account for, I think, 20% of all searches. And then what we did next is, and you probably see this coming if you've been following um, recent developments in um, natural language processing is use a bi-directional LCM. And unfortunately, I don't have time to explain exactly how this model works. But um, we basically, it's an LCM that goes forward over the text and also goes backwards. And then we use the 36,000 dimensional softmax to get um, the final state. So and after seven days of training, it, um, this actually gave us 15% accuracy and for a model with um, two layers, this gave us 17% accuracy. <coughs> so we're planning to implement this model soon and I have some examples prepared for you where we actually um, did better with the LSTM models. So I cherry picked some examples where we actually get different results for other models. So. Um, this one says, I rearranged my room last night and I had trouble sleeping. Hopefully I will get used to it. So the cosine model gives us a trouble, which is okay, but it's not really a good image search term. It's very abstract. Then the back of words model gives us bad. The LSTM model gives us bedroom, so that's a two layer LSTM model. And that's actually what they search for. So here we were able to correctly predict what they search for. Then, um, any girls want to chat with the sailor, which is um, also a common use case for our platform, to be honest, which so people just want to chat with other people. And the cosine model said sailor moon, which is of course completely incorrect. Um, it just happens to have that word in it. Then the back of words model um, said girls, which I guess is okay. But um, the LCM models both said US Navy. And then the actual search term was Navy and not US Navy. So, um, but of course, like those search terms are equally good. 
And then another example that I have is I want to love, love like a romantic 80s movie. So the cosine model said 80s, which I guess is okay. Then the back of words model said a notebook. And I, um, I'm honestly not very good with films, but this uh, appears to be a 2000 film. So it's actually wrong. <laughs> so that the LSTM model, but the um, two layer LSTM model said Pretty in Pink, which is an 80s movie. So it was actually worked. And, but the actual search term was Clueless, which is a 90s movie. So our model is more smarter than our user in this case. <laughs> So that's it. Um, I guess we have some time for questions. And also, we're actively hiring a data scientist right now. And we're actually located in uh, Vallas, California. Right, actually our office is in this picture. Um, um, so if you ever feel it's too cold in San Francisco, come <laughs> and talk to me after the talk. Yeah. I mean, if you're just taking the feed, it might have, uh, like, you need some kind of obscenity filter or something. Um, yeah, so part this is because it depends on the sources, of course. If the sources are very, very clean and um, not obscene, then we don't really have this problem. So we don't really have a lot of obscene um, images. But also because it's static, we can if someone sees a bad image, then we can actually manually remove that image. So we can keep improving it over time. So are your users doing that kind of annotation? No, we do that manually. We do a lot of um, moderation and uh, manual work as well. Um, but it's difficult because we have over a million images. So, Yeah? Well, I don't know your service, but I'm wondering if the say something more about adding history? Because if you have an anonymous environment, then what does history mean? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, um, said, I, you said something about adding uh, history to, uh, to a state. So can you talk? Oh, this is, uh, this is about the LSTM model, right? Okay. So um, we that is actually a model that views the text as a sequence of words. So there's not really a notion of history. Okay. Yeah? Too short at the very beginning, um, the story about a person whose brother wanted to buy the yearly extra money to buy the valley address. Mm -hmm. So is there a whisper for that that you can show how it would look like? In just pure text? Looks like the I think. Whoops. This one, right? Yes. yes. So this is the whisper. Right side, that's the whisper? Yeah. So if you put a. Right side, then. Say again? What is that? That looks like that. Yeah, they're two different ones. So. Also, I'm not repeating the question, so. Um, the image he wants to convey, his person. Mm -hmm. So the whisper itself will have a full text. This, so this is the post. It's a short piece of text on top of a background image. And this is what you can view inside of the app. And then you can reply to it or you can chat with that person. So the question was, how, do we, how exactly do we tag the images? And um, we have a, 
the answer is we have a variety of third party sources and we try to take the searches that our users search for and try to find images in those third party sources that correspond to those searches. So other than that, we don't have an ontology. But if we cannot find an image for a given search term, then we will just not use that search term. Yeah? So the question was, how do we um, avoid having the same image over and over? And the answer is, um, we try for search terms that are suggested a lot. We try to get a lot of images. And we randomize the images that we present to the user. And we generate four search terms for every post. And we're limited to. Um, 10 suggested images. But we do have some images that appear more often. Than, so maybe images are used 10 times per day, for example. And that's acceptable, because a user can only see so many posts. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.